What's up, B Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Ready to Love Season 7, Episode Number 7 Queens Don't Chase, right? Now, before we go ahead and get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. Do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, sharing the video. And with that out the way, without further ado, let's discuss Ready to Love, shall we? All right, you guys, you know something I just noticed, and I'm done, this is the second video that I've done. You guys can see my lotion on my nightstand. No, it is not what you think, so you don't have to leave it in the comment section. No, what happened is I took my shower, I took a shower, and I put lotion on my legs. So, <laughs> I put lotion on my legs, so that's why I sit right there. So yes, no, you guys, it's not what you're thinking. So don't be like, oh, JB, I see your lotion. No, shut up. So you guys, this episode, we picked up where we last left off. And that is with the group all together. And you know, they were talking about who they were feeling, who they were not feeling. And you guys know that pick me Susu and Blake and Jeffrey, they all had a little back and forth with each other. And Thomas said, okay, I gotta put a stop to this. So he did put a stop to it. And honestly, I don't really care to be quite honest with you guys one way or the other. I don't. So I've said it plenty of I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I don't think that Blake likes any of these women here. Susu is a pick me. Jeffrey is playing a numbers game. It's how I feel. Um. So Tommy told everybody go off eat and then I'm up you know pull I'm gonna bring you all together and we're gonna deliberate and we're gonna send one man we're gonna send one man and one woman home tonight and I was like okay so we see Blake so Blake was talking to pick me Susu and this is why I call her pick me Susu because Blake didn't say anything you know he was just talking about how she def you know I get basically like how she defended him against Jeffrey right and I'm just like, girl, you smile about everything with this man. And from what I have saw, this man is not being any kind of intentional towards you. So what is it, sis? That's why I call her pick me Seuss, because it just gives me pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me vibes. Right. So then we see Andre. So Andre, he was talking to Jeffrey and consoling Jeffrey. Now, I uh, dare I say I like Andre. The only thing about Andre that, that I hate is just the Medea mic in his for and is but in this episode he has an, he has the Medea mic in the bun. So I'm I'm cool with the little bun. Not really, but I'm I, I like the little bun better than I do the microphone, right? So then we see Morgan and Marcia and they were talking to um to Aunt, to Anthony, right? And I love what Morgan said to Anthony that, you know, she's basically telling him to be more intentional with his connections, right? Because she says queens don't chase. And I agree with that. And, I, and you guys know how I feel about Rated to Love. You guys know that I always feel like when it comes to Rated to Love, the women chase the men. And I just never am too fond of that. I don't like that. It's always the women going after the men. And the men never are pursuing the women. So I never liked that, right? So, but also I tweeted this just recently today. And I was saying that when it comes to Mark Morgan and Marcia, they're pursuing Tony and Tony isn't really pursuing them. Tony is just, like I said plenty of times, he's shape shifting into what he feels that the women want from him. And speaking of Tony, Tony tweeted me last week, right? Tony tweeted me because I was like, I hate the fact that um, Morgan and Marcia, you know, like Tony, he was like, too bad for you. So sorry, sir. I'm not on this show. I don't live in Miami. I don't want Morgan and Marcy. I think they're beautiful women, but I don't, number one, I don't live in Miami. Number two, I have no intentions of coming to Miami. So it's not too bad to, it's not so sorry, too bad for me. I don't live in Miami. I live in Dallas, Texas, sir. So ski daddle and go the fuck on somewhere else with that bullshit. I'm not lending. Go somewhere with that bullshit, my nigga. I'm the wrong nigga. I'm not lending. I'm not lending. 
I'm not lending, nigga. I'm going to repeat that one more time for you if you're watching. I'm not lending. You get it? Cool. That's it. <laughs> Marcia also tweeted me as well, right? Because I tweeted that for Marcia and Morgan to basically get together and compare their notes. And she was, she was laughing. She was like, what does that mean? And I was like, when it comes to Tony, I just don't think that Tony is... Now, when it comes to Tony, I feel like we see Tony's representative. You guys let me know what you think about that. But she said, you know, she, they make her smile and everything, but she, she listens to everything. And I was like, good. I hope you are. Because you guys, despite the fact, she's like, and she's actually liked a lot of my tweets. Even the one that I tweeted about her hair, they, you know, her hair gives cowardly lion. It does give cowardly lion. She's a beautiful girl, but that is a lot of goddamn, that's a lot of bundles. Just take a few out. Let's pause here and move forward, you guys. So we see Jonique and Lyndon, they were talking, right? And Jonique was talking about basically, I'm going sum, to sum it up, right? She was talking about how, you know, you might, have a connect, you might have a connection with somebody, but that person might not have a connection with you. And lo and behold, Lyndon has been in that position, right? Because remember, he asked um, Mercedes in last week's episode, did she like him? And she said no. He, she got, he got friend zoned, right? So then we see more Andre. So Andre was talking to Mercedes. And you guys remember in last week's episode, um, he brought up the fact that when he left the process, that she, Mercedes didn't reach out to him, right? And he asked her why. She said, <laughs> she said it, out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, she had other connections to cultivate. And that's what she did. Now, he got upset about that. Talking about that shows him who she really is. Not really, right? If we're on a date, if we're in a, if we're dating, if we're in a dating pool with each other now, like I said in last week's episode, could she have texted him and checked on him? Absolutely. But if you wanted her to text you and check on you, any aspect of still being one of your connections, you're super delusional. If you thought that, right, you're not on the show anymore and she's still on the show. Why would she drop her other two connections to try to build a connection with you and you not on the show? Could she have done that? Yes. But why would she take away from her other two connections to then try to just cultivate something with you that one is not going to be seen on on television? Number number one, let's just keep it real. All of y'all want to be seen on television. Let's keep it a book. A book. Y'all all, all want to be on TV. Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? I don't have an issue with that. I have no issues with none of y'all wanting to be on TV, right? So... Then we move over and we are we see um, Morgan. She's talking to Tony, right? And I feel like with Morgan and Marcia, I feel like part of them might see what we see with when it comes to Tony, but I don't think that they are acting on it, right? I think they might see pa cause for pause, but they still it's like you know how you come to a, a you know how you come to like mm, let me I'm trying to think of an analogy. You know how you come to a yield sign, right? You're supposed to you're supposed to yield to the oncoming traffic. I feel like they see the oncoming traffic. So Tony, so Mor so you got Morgan and Marcia who are in front of who are right there by the yield sign, right? And then you got the the traffic that's coming that you're supposed to yield to, right? So Tony is that traffic that you're supposed to yield to. So they see Tony coming. They see him coming, they see him coming, they see him coming, but they're like, uh, maybe I can beat him, right? Maybe I can beat it, and we, it, won't be a, it won't be anything, right? Instead of stopping and be like, mm-mm, this don't look right. Let him go by. Ooh, had not come up with that analogy. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it was a good one, right? I think it was a damn good one, right? But I think that's what it is. I think it's like a yield sign. I think that they're at a yield sign. They can see what, they can see it, but they feel like, Maybe the connection is a little bit stronger and they can they can break Tony down. I don't know. I don't know why they feel that way, but they feel that way. Right. So we get Tommy. So Tommy is deliberating with the women and with the men separately. They talk about who they're who is in their top, who's in their bottom. You guys know I don't really care about that. So we get down to the bottom two men and the bottom two women. Right. So Tommy told Andre, nope, nope, no, no, no. Anthony, Mark Anthony, please step forward, right? 
So he tells the men why the ladies have put them in the bottom two. All right, so Anthony, the ladies have decided that you are still ready to love. So Mark Anthony, it comes down to Mark Anthony. So Mark Anthony, the ladies have decided, the ladies have decided to use their save. So that's right. The ladies have all unanimously came together and decided that you are still ready to love. So the ladies use their save, right? So then Tommy tells, pick me Susu and Jonique. Please step forward. I was like, Susu and Jonique, right? I was like, okay, so maybe Jonique is going, nope, nope, not, not Jonique. Maybe Susu is going home, right? Child, no. They sent Jonique home. I was like, what now? Now, see here, see, here we go, right here. Tony, 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 Tony. I told you guys, Tony is game playing. Because didn't he, didn't he sit there and try to say that Jonique was one of his connections, right? Jonique was a connection of yours, right? But you didn't fight for Jonique. Like, like the, the same way that, um, what's his name? Demario. The way Demario was trying to fight for Corvea, you didn't do that for, what's her name again? Jonique. You didn't do that for Jonique. I don't think you, I don't, again, I don't buy really anything with Tony. Tony gives me Sly Sylvester vibes, but that's just my personal opinion. I definitely want you guys to tell me what you think down in the comments. And we're going to move forward. So Tommy tells them, so I want you guys to just basically, you know, take what you heard here and use it. So there's no, there's not going to be an elimination this week, you guys. So let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys, so next up, we have two different dates, right? So we have Anthony. He went out on a date with, he invited Pick Me Susu over to his home. And Mark Anthony, he went out with um, Jeffrey. So first, we're going to talk about Mark Anthony and Pick Me Susu. So this date between Mark, not Mark Anthony, but this date between Anthony and Pick Me Susu, it was very boring, right? The interesting thing for me is that Susu is trying to say that, you know, Anthony isn't giving her anything, but neither are you. Like, do you guys get where I'm coming from? When it comes to Pick Me Susu, your one and only connection is, let's keep it real, is Blake. And even with that connection, I feel like the connection with Blake and Susu is one-sided. I think she likes him more than he likes her. You initiated that kiss with him because she brought that kiss up at, she brought that kiss up in a deliberation. You kissed him. He didn't kiss you like that'd be my I don't dislike Susu. I just think she's I, I think she's a pick me. And on top of that, the fact that I think she's a pick me. You are pursuing Blake. He's not pursuing you. Only thing that Blake has done that could be quote unquote proceed, you know, pursuing her would be giving her the nickname Susu. I don't know why I keep doing air quotes, giving her the name Susu and giving her that bracelet. But those two things were just trying to buy you over. He's not, from what we've saw in the show, he's not shown you anything to say, oh, I like you, right? But the day was very awkward with Anthony and Pick Me Susu. So then we move over to Blake Anthony, Blake Anthony, Mark Anthony, and um, Jeffrey, right? Oh, God, you guys know how I feel about Jeffrey. I like Jeffrey. She's a cute girl, but that voice is annoying as hell. Oh my God! So you know, me and Blank, me and Mark Anthony, we're on a date, and he's one of my strongest connections. Oh, girl, that voice just irritates me. So Jeffrey reveals to Mark Anthony, I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at him. She revealed to him that she has Crohn's disease. <laughs> Again, I'm not laughing about she has Crohn's disease. I'm laughing because after she told this man she has Crohn's disease. In his interview, he said he don't even know what Crohn's disease is. I was like, sir, oh, wow. So you don't see those commercials on television about Crohn's, Crohn's disease? Uh, I saw it. So, again, I want to preface it by saying I wasn't, I'm not laughing that she has Crohn's disease. I'm laughing about the fact that they were playing this 
And that's really what got me is the fact that they were playing this somber music in the background. And then it was like, when he said he don't know what it is. Um, I didn't get much from this date either. I've said it plenty of times, and I know I said it earlier in the review. When it comes to Jeffrey, I think Jeffrey is playing a numbers game. I really believe she's playing a numbers game. And it's smart. I don't have an issue with it. Because most times, in most times of Ready to Love, we see the men playing a numbers game. We very rarely see the women play a numbers game. And I like it. I like it, you guys. I got to be real. I like it. I like seeing a woman play the numbers game. I'm here for it, right? So let's pause here and move forward. Actually, guys, I want to wrap up the episode. So we see Mercedes. Mercedes is so beautiful. And then her hair, baby, she don't put a lot of, she, does, she doesn't do a lot. It's, it's, it's you know, light makeup, the, her real hair. Nothing is wrong with women who wear, you know, weaves and wigs and stuff like that. I think they're beautiful as well, right? But it's something about seeing a woman with her natural hair. Gorgeous, right? Um... This day with her and Mark Anthony, you know, they were talking about, you know, him being a pilot and, you know, how he got into it. I wasn't really paying attention to the date, right? I did see a little bit of a chemistry between them. You know, he flexed his muscles and she was, you know, grabbing on it. He told her to stop grabbing on it, you know, stop rubbing or something's going to go up and it's not going to be a genie. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I probably would have been over that date. I mean, I probably would have been over that date. Not probably. I would have been, right? So they shared a kiss with each other. Um, okay, I, I, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I don't have an issue with it. Oh, I forgot to mention you guys that Tony and Morgan kissed. It didn't seem authentic on his part. Even though he told her to come get it. I would have said no thank you. But um, that's really it. Then on the flip side, we got another date with Morgan and Tony. Sly, sly, Tony. She tells him she likes him, but Tony is a wild card. I'm like, well, thank you for realizing that he's a wild card. But again, it's the analogy that I used earlier about the fact that I don't think that, you know, she it's like a yield sign. And I just don't think she's yielding to Tony. I think she's trying to, you know, trying to keep going with Tony. And I wish she wouldn't. But hey, it is, it is, it is what it is, right? The one thing that I will say, I hope when it comes down to it, that Morgan or Marcia, I hope that the final choice comes down to them and that they are the ones to send Tony packing. Oh, but that because technically Morgan has another connection in Linden. I don't know who else Marcia has a connection with. I don't think Marcia has any other connections, but you guys will we'll, we'll we'll see how the we're dwindling, we're dwindling down the season. How? And we're on episode eight. No, seven. How many episodes do we got this season? Because we're at the half, because we're going to get it down to six women. We're getting it down to six women. So that means that if ready to if they're still sticking to how ready to love typically is, there's typically three couples left at the end. So six women, that means three more, that means three more women are going home and three more men are going home, right? Well, they might have more men than they have women at this point, right? We don't have that many more episodes. We can't have that many more episodes left to go. So then we get to this last uh, scene of the episode, which I think was very pointless. So Morgan and Blake went out on a date with each other, right? I get Morgan feeling like she had to get something off her chest with Blake, right? I get that, right? But here's my thing. If I have such a disdain for somebody... I'm not going to sit down with them and have a conversation with them, right? So they sat down and they had a conversation. So, you know, he, she, you know, she reiterates what happened with them at the first mixer and how she, you know, how she felt. But she didn't tell him how she felt. She didn't tell him what was said. She, she didn't really go into deep detail about what the issue was, right? So Blake apologized. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, why did you apologize to her? Because you don't know what the issue is. And he said, explain to him what the issue is. And I was going back to what I, it goes back to what I just said. Why would you apologize if you don't know what the issue is between you and her? That was a waste. That was a pointless apology. That wasn't an apology, right? So 
I'm going to give Blake some grief, but I also got to give a little grief to Morgan, right? So Morgan lost me when she went off on Blake, right? She read Blake, right? But it was, it was, it was kind of pointless because he was unaffected by it. He wasn't phased by it. She said some of the, she said one thing that I actually agree with. When it comes to Blake, I don't think Blake likes any of these women. I don't think Blake is intentional with any of these women. And I've said that multiple times, right? But I go back to the point where I just said when we started this scene right here. Why did she go out on a date with him? If you feel such a disdain for him, why sit down with the man? I'm still not understanding that. I don't understand that. But um, that's really all I got for Rated to Love. I want you guys to get down in the comment section, subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications, share the video you guys, and until the next time, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, yeah, you guys, I forgot to mention that we won't be back for Ready to Love. So we're off next week because Ready to um, Love is celebrating its 100th episode with the fans. I did see somebody. I did see two people that I, I, I do watch on YouTube from time to time. Courtney and Eddie. So shout out to them for being on there. But um, own Will Packer Production. Where's my invitation? I'm just playing. Nah, you guys, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, bye.